Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. We're going to talk about Doctor Who again. We're still reeling from the massive retcon that happened over the weekend. The Timeless Children, Chris Chibnall's attempt to rewrite Who history, to go back and say that the Doctor is not the Doctor we know. The Doctor's not even Gallifreyan. The Doctor has had many, many incarnations. The Doctor has been every kind of person in his, her, their lives. Uh, it completely upends the show and the media loves it. The media outlets you would expect to love it, love it. The fans absolutely hate it. And we're going to talk about that on this episode of Clownfish TV. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. We're almost at 100,000 subs. We're only a couple thousand away. Uh, thanks for the support, especially over the last uh, six to eight months. It's been absolutely incredible. All right, I want to put this out there. This is the uh, origins of Doctor Who finally revealed on the BBC YouTube channel. And uh, people aren't really, aren't really on board with this. Now, BBC... It's got uh, 1.6 thousand downvotes to almost a thousand upvotes. I'm gonna go ahead and downvote that myself. And the comments, uh, the comments are are well, what would you expect them to be? The timeless children, more like the clueless showrunner. Somewhere in hell, John Nathan Turner breathes a sigh of relief at the fact that he is no longer the worst showrunner in the show's history. This is honestly disgusting. This episode was well done. Chris for killing off Doctor Who. Well done, Chris Chibnall, for killing off Doctor Who. I once had a dream in which I was skipping across the rings of Saturn while holding hands with a giant chinchilla. It still made more sense in this episode of Doctor Who. Goodbye, Doctor Who. We had some great times together, but all things must come to an end, and I feel the end is now. Uh, this would have been great if the timeless child was the master. I'm going to say it. This is basically Chibnall's old Doctor Who fanfic he left on his computer, calling it right now. BBC, you failed Doctor Who. The next showrunner needs to undo this and will put William Hartnell back as the man born on Gallifrey that becomes the first Doctor. Shark equals jumped. I mean, it goes on and on and on. That's on the BBC. Now, go out to the same video. They posted the same video, the Doctor's Origins, on their official Doctor Who channel and again a lot of downvotes not quite as many 4,000 upvotes to 2.2 thousand downvotes and we've got the same kinds of comments uh bbc i hope you're paying attention chibnall managed to take a big greasy dump on almost 60 years of backstory with a single episode but trying to make doctor who more special by the nature of her origin he made her less special by her actions i miss madman with a box the person who is willing to sacrifice himself to save Wilfred Mott. Now we have an immortal who lets someone else sacrifice themselves while she runs away. That's true. There's no element of danger. We know now that the Doctor can regenerate an infinite number of times. Nothing is going to kill the Doctor. You know, and any time the Doctor lets someone else take a fall for him, her, they, them, um, then, you know, the Doctor is being a selfish prick. Instead of the Doctor regenerating, can't we just have the writers get fired? So Doctor Who is Palpatine's granddaughter. Can't the Doctor just be a madman with a box passing through helping out? Why make him, her, the most important person in the universe? Well, if the next showrunner doesn't like this, um, remember when the Doctor was supposed to be half-human, this will be retconned out as one giant lie. That's the only possible solution for this, in my opinion, is to retcon this. You know, to have it turn out to be a lie. Have it turn out to be the Master messing with the Doctor for whatever reason, have a, a much smarter writer come along and undo this retcon. Great, now her introduction is going to be, I'm the Doctor, I'm an unknown species from an unknown planet, and I was once captured by a scavenger race who experimented on me, stealing my identity and everything special. The show should be renamed Doctor Y. Now, clearly, the fans hate this. And the BBC doesn't care. They've had their head of drama come out and say, Doctor Who is fantastic. It's in fantastic shape editorially. It's never going to be canceled. Uh, we're not going to cancel the show. It's wonderful. Just keep paying your license fee. Keep paying your license fee so we can keep doing this to Doctor Who. But the media loves it. The media loves it. A lot of the news outlets we would expect to like it, love it. Uh, we've got this from Sci-Fi Wire. Sci-Fi Wire, which let's go back a little bit. Sci-Fi Wire is the same news outlet 
that uh, endlessly defended She-Ra and told old school She-Ra fans that they were, you know, sexist, misogynist, whatever, homophobes because they didn't like the redesign. And we're including women in that, you know, including my wife, who is a massive She-Ra fan from, from way back. And uh, they're telling them that they're, they're sexist, misogynist, racist, homophobes. We've heard all of these names before because they did not like the fact that they, they uh, turned She-Ra into a basically um, a teenage boy <laughs> dressing up as She-Ra and a lot of the other changes made to the show. Um, Sci-Fi Wire is also the same news outlet that attacked anime. This is the, the place that had the article about how uh, military uniforms in anime made them very uncomfortable. That it was kind of fascist and that anime promotes uh, fascism and that uh, anime is problematic. They've had many, many hit pieces like this. Now this one, this one is now Doctor Who's universe is so, so much bigger now for season 13 and beyond. It's awesome because you can catch them all. Uh, they're talking about how all the all the doctors, since there's so many doctors now, it's gonna be like Pokemon. Um, you know, did, are, are there how many sets of 12 doctors are there? Uh, filling in these new sets of 12 would be like a giant 3D galactic bingo cube. Gotta catch them all would suddenly apply to an entirely new franchise. Funko Pops would have a field day. I'm just going to let that simmer. Uh, you can process this. You can process this. And this is a problem. This is a, this is a huge problem. After five decades, there's this. The doctor is not a time lord at all. She was not born Shabogan. Her ability to produce that sweet regeneration energy is all natural. In short, she comes from a completely different alien race altogether. Who are the Doctor's real people? Where are they? The TARDIS has been to the ends of time in the deepest reaches of space. Have they quietly been there the whole time watching her? Are they silently regenerating in secret under the very noses of the egotistical, self-styled Time Lords? This turns everything on its ear. And not in a good way. I mean, could you imagine if... Could you imagine if DC Comics just suddenly said, hey, guess what? Uh, guess what? Um, one, Batman's parents are still alive. And uh, I don't know if they've done that or not. I mean, I can't keep up with comics now. Maybe they've done that. Maybe they've done that. You know, Batman's parents are still alive. And Superman, yeah, he's not from Krypton. Uh, he's not from Krypton. No, we've been telling you this for decades, but it was all a lie. Lex Luthor lied to Superman, told Superman he was from Krypton. And he really wasn't. Um, so the kryptonite, that's just, uh, that's a placebo effect. It really, you know, it really uh, uh, doesn't affect him. He just thinks it does because he's been lied to for decades, right? I mean, this is just bullshit. Certain sections of Doctor Who fandom fell into hysterics. Yes, they did. Uh, and they're, they're in hysterics on the comments on BBC's official YouTube page. And it's going to continue. There's going to be a hell of a backlash. Um, now, Bleeding Cool brings up something that uh, Doomcock actually pointed out, which, um, you know, I got to admit, I was so floored that they retconned Doctor Who. I hadn't given it much thought, but there is a deeper meaning to the hows and the whys of the Doctor being retconned in this fashion. Basically, the Time Lords are colonials. It's colonialism. They, they, took, they took regeneration from uh, another race and the doctor started out as a little brown-skinned girl who becomes a little Asian girl who becomes a number of other girls. So the Time Lords basically stole regeneration, stole technology from a more technologically advanced race. And they built their, their uh, society of privilege on the backs of uh, children from this other technologically uh, more advanced race. That's basically what this boils down to. Um, yeah, it's interesting though, because this is coming from Bleeding Cool, and the writer on Bleeding Cool uh, thinks that they're they're very very smart. And Doomcock actually pointed this out in his first video. Uh, it says, "I watched and thought about the Doctor's new origin story. I found some interesting new meanings and answers to the Doctor's story. I'm slightly surprised no one else seemed to pick up on them or discuss them. So I might as well. The Doctor is non-binary because the Doctor starts out now as a little girl, so the Doctor can flip flop uh, their gender." We already knew this, you know, I mean, I have to tell you when they announced uh, Jodie Whittaker as the doctor, I just was like, well, it's a new regeneration cycle, new rules, you know, whatever. But now they made sure that, you know, she started out as a little girl. It's a history of exploitation, abuse and colonialism. 
because that's so fun. That's so fun to have exploitation, abuse, and colonialism addressed in a kid's science fiction show. Uh, awesome. Awesome. But yeah, they talk about this and they love it. You know, the media loves it. Doctor Who now is about colonialism because the privileged uh, white uh, woman from Time Lord Society exploited, abused, and repeatedly murdered uh, all those diverse children and stole their technology. And then the Time Lords built their built their empire on the backs of these people, you know. And and uh, you know the Doctor ran away from Gallifrey because you know she's been repeatedly abused by her 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 uh, pseudo parent. I mean, this is like, I can't even wrap my head around why the BBC would greenlight this. Oh, I, I can. I mean, given the state of the BBC today, I, I totally can. Uh, you've killed the show, BBC. Is Doctor Who too political from express.co.uk? Uh, they talked to some Doctor Who fans. We talked about a Doctor Who fan, uh, Ian, who actually was a massive, massive Doctor Who collector. Uh, he had the Guinness Book of World Records uh, for the largest Doctor Who collection, I think, two years. I don't know if it was two years in a row or uh, two years interspersed. But he's a massive Who fan. He said he's done. He's done. And there are other Doctor Who fans that aren't happy. Super fan Martina Mercer believes the show is now political as well, trying to satisfy everyone while pleasing no one. Mercer believes this change is partly down to the show's popularity in America. Actually, its popularity is waning in America. It has been gradually distorted to suit all audiences. She explained it's too politically correct while losing what makes it such an incredible program. The story comes second to the message it's trying to portray, such as global warming, feminism, and recycling. It reminds me of the teachers at a primary school trying to drive home the message of the rainforest being cut down and the impact on the environment while forgetting that most watch it for the ultimate escapism and the audience are intelligent enough to understand the basics of the issues it's forcing upon us. Uh, this is true. My son calls it the magic school bus and Doctor Who has become Miss Frizzle. And uh, yeah, I mean, look, the show's dead. Put a fork in it. Unless they retcon this last season, at least that last episode, Doctor Who is is effectively dead to a lot of people. And, you know, the ratings drop that they saw between series 11 and series 12 will be nothing compared to the ratings drop between 12 and 13. A lot of people are very, very pissed off, BBC, but you don't care. Because you get paid either way, don't you? Uh, you get paid either way. You don't have to depend on advertisers to bankroll these programs. Um, so you can piss on your audience all you want, and you just collect your check from your license fees. And uh, I can only hope, again, I'm not in the UK, but I can only hope for the sake of uh, audiences in the UK who are not on board with this decision uh, that they pull the plug on the license fee. Because that's the only way the show is ever going to get canceled or changed at this point. The BBC has made it very, very clear. They're plowing full steam ahead uh, with this very, very political Doctor Who. And uh, it is what it is. You know, it is what it is. Meanwhile, there's a lot of other things to watch on TV. Tune out. That's what I'm going to do. So we're going to wrap this one up. Please subscribe for more pop culture, news, views, and rants. And we'll talk later. Hey guys, thanks for watching Clownfish TV. Please consider supporting the channel. Go to clownfishsupport.com. That's clownfishsupport.com. And if you want to join our community, go to clownfishtalk.com. That's clownfishtalk.com. Please subscribe, ring the bell for notifications. We will talk to you next time.